Hi guys, welcome from Vienna. This is Vienna here, the 15th district, and uh, it's a nice location to talk about um, Albania actually, because it's a country I really love. It's already a NATO ally, and it's a country I really would like to see in the European Union very soon. But there's a lot of resistance, unfortunately, in the European Union. So what can be done against that? And here's my call now in 2021, in April, 25th of April, there is elections in Albania. And it's time to build afterwards a coalition of uh, European consensus. And that's important uh, that all political parties work together, like we did it in Austria in the year 94, 95 and make some clarity to the people that the future is the European Union and the instrument to do it is to adopt the Euro. That happened already in Montenegro and in Kosovo, hopefully as well in the beautiful country of uh, Ma uh, Macedonia very soon and so Albania as well. So all the countries of the southern Balkans uh, would be then in the Eurozone together, also Croatia is coming and also Bulgaria. Not in the Eurozone, don't get me wrong, uh, it is um, or the unilateral adoption of the Euro which is available for the countries of the Southern Balkans and it has worked very well for Kosovo and it has worked very well for uh, Ultra Montenegro and it's the best way to do it. And that's my call basically, it's as simple as that. And once that is done, the next step is obviously then to uh, join the European Union and so it will be, together with Macedonia and with Montenegro. So all three countries uh, basically united, joining, uh, because they are NATO members also, that I made already very clear. That's the most important. And based on that, and to go into the next level, and that's the European Union. But uh, to first have this currency agreed, and a kind of electoral agreement for the next four years, from 2021 to 2025, and then already inside the European Union, sending parliamentarians to the European Parliament in 2024 for the next European election. And based on that, we are basically, then the parties can <laughs> start a normal political fight again. But it's kind of a European peace agreement, you can call it a European consensus. I know the political history of Albania very well, it's full of conflicts and full of problems and that has led to a lot of problems yeah, in the last 30 years of freedom. But I think now three years of kind of a consensus, stability agreement, you can make many names for that. Yeah? You can also just call it the Euro agreement yeah? because it needs the both major parties uh, to agree on a big step forward for the country. The lake was nice, but there were anyhow many manipulations and uh, crises according to that uh, currency. So in, if you're honest, you know, it was not such a brilliant currency. And why to have the only free floating currency in the region, in Albania? <laughs> and that's not uh, useful and it also hinders economic regional integration. And it is also complicated because much of the Albanian income anyhow comes from exports uh, of labor ultimately people working in Europe sending remittances back so it's quite logical to have the same currency and that's a major step I understand and some people are patriotic they want to have their king and their kind of national patriotic currencies but that in the European Union we anyhow have the euro so ultimately it's just a question do you do it at the end of a long process in 30 years or do you go full in already now and I have lost a bit patience with all this kind of conditionality and long processes, 100 years to wait, Macron uh, being ready for Macedonia and Albania, maybe somewhere in the 2035 or beyond, another three parliaments to wait. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I'm just uh, now 52, I will be 53. And uh, I do, it doesn't matter for me, obviously, I know, maybe to wait until I'm 100, but uh, to lose another generation of Albanians with loss of hope uh, for the Europe and a lot of additional immigration and a lot of additional corruption, just because we are too lazy to do the work of integration. The money we have, the institutions we have, 
Albania is a very good ally. I remind you, just yesterday was the Stability and Association Council in the European Union in Brussels and everybody said, oh wonderful, how close we are uh, integrated already, Albania and the EU, when it comes to foreign policy. Very much different to the Serbs, which are very far away from <laughs> the European foreign policy and from NATO. And so I wonder, I mean also when you want to talk in historic terms, yeah, it was always that the Albanians were very good allies of the Albanians, uh, of the Italians, of the Austrians, of the Germans, uh, of the Americans, and especially of the Americans. And they are very uh, good NATO allies, so why not help our allies a bit more? I mean, that should be the idea of an alliance, that when you need help, you help, get help, and then you, when you need to join other institutions, also your allies are there for you. Because you're no longer ally uh, alone, you are allied. And that's basically what we in the EU should also support because I'm confident that Biden thinks that way and he would love to see that. But uh, we are in Europe, the big blockers, and the Macrons and the Kurzes and all these people, they are unfortunately not helpful for the Western Balkans. Actually, the term Western Balkan by itself is already a scandal because it's very different, Macedonia, Montenegro, Albania, which are in NATO, to the three countries who are not in NATO. And it's also very different to Kosovo and Bosnia, which want to be in NATO, and uh, Serbia, which doesn't want, only cooperate. Yeah? And so we have to make choices and differences, because not everybody is equal, yeah? in the sense that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do in foreign policy, it doesn't matter where you buy your weapons, it doesn't matter if you are um, working with criminal networks or if you are uh, promoting China in Europe and so on and so on. That's all what the Serbs are doing, yeah? unfortunately, under the present leadership. And we in Europe should uh, award good behavior and also say what is wrong. I think so. That is our task. Yeah? And when the Albanians, the Montenegrinians and the North Macedonians are so positive, then please, let's support them. And that's, I think, quite logical. I think so. I think, you know, I can actually not understand why we don't do that. <laughs> and so, please, yeah. the Euro first, NATO then and then membership and it can be done pretty fast yeah. and I call on the Albanian authorities and also in Macedonia similar to work together closely and uh, to ignore all the calls that this is impossible because many people when they see my videos they will say oh Günther you're a dreamer Günther you don't know what you're talking Günther it's impossible Mrs. Lagarde will never allow it and uh, the Bundesbank will chase you and I'm still making my videos here and nobody has chased me so it's absolutely possible to do it yeah? and the best proof is the Kosovo and Montenegro an example and it's absolutely what we can do and what we should do as well. It's our moral obligation. I think so. And no country can really be successful alone, separated from the European labor market, outside of the currency union and outside of the customs union. It's pretty lonely and it's pretty difficult to develop. And we should have done that 10 years ago. Uh, but OK, it's now the time to get it done and to get it done fast. And so I call Albania, adopt the euro, Albania, join the European Union, build an alliance with Montenegro and North Macedonia, forget the rest. This is important now. These are the key countries uh, to really join. And once in, there is all the possibility to help all the other countries who want to join as well. Good. Regards from Vienna. Bye.